Welcome back to another episode of Mosaic Minds Podcast. Today we are welcoming social media influencer, comedian, and philanthropist Dennis McRae to the show, or better known by his subscribers and his followers as Dinden. We'll talk about his speedy rise to fame along with his stand-up comedy, his TV show, and most importantly, his sense of community and how much he loves Indianapolis. You can find all of the platforms and businesses that we mentioned in the show notes if you're listening or in the description if you're watching it on youtube also be sure to check out our other episodes on youtube at youtube.com slash the at sign mosaic dot mind dot podcast and if you are watching be sure to click on the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications welcome to mosaic minds the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Then. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. Why don't you go ahead and, and tell us how you got started? You know, what, what got you started doing the videos? Um, I kind of already know, but just for our listeners, just tell us um, what got you into doing the videos in the first place and kept you motivated there at first to continue to, to do that. Well, um, first off, my mom, one day me and my mother was going to get something to eat and she told me to videotape it because I was a photographer, videographer. So I videotaped it and I just did a little simple voiceover. And the next day it was like a hundred thousand views. And I was like, whoa. So then I had got the attention of some TV people. So they had gave me a show called Breakfast, Lunch and Din Din. I saw which that. I was just doing Before, Channel 40. Yeah. And I was doing commercials for them first, just like different businesses. And then the beginning of the year, that's when I was going to start the show. It was kind of going to be like Triple D. Um, Long story short, I lost my mom, uh, ended up finding out I had cancer two or three months later, said I was going to take a break. One day, did the Indianapolis video, and it just changed my entire life. Wow. Wow. So so just to kind of touch on that, like, all good now? Like, I saw it looked like your last treatment was in February. Um, Yeah, I'm not not completely done. Uh, I had to do chemo. I had to do chemo, like, immediately. You know, that's that's weird for somebody that has never even thought about cancer, let alone chemo. And um, it was supposed to keep me down for like 18 to 20 weeks. It kept me down for the first week. And then all of a sudden I got Mr. T strength and I just never stopped. So the chemo is ending. That's got to be something that a lot of listeners that have had cancer can really, I mean, they probably really relate to you. And that's probably one of the things that do you get a lot of people reaching out to you and yeah. Or what kind of drug are they giving you to keep you energetic? <laughs> you know, like they're not giving me no drug, man. It's just, um, you know, it, it's just, just be me being me. So, you know, I, I get a lot of, you know, people going through a lot of stuff. It makes me kind of get emotional as well, but, um, yeah, it's just wild. Man. Hey, so Dindin, this is Jason, man. You're repping the 317 there with the Colts and the Pacers, <laughs> man. That's uh, solid stuff. Having a broadcasting background, man, I'm going to pay you the ultimate compliment. You're natural. You do a good job. You're funny in yourself, man. Talk talk to us a little bit about like when you're when you're throwing stuff out, how does how does it how does it go viral in your opinion? You know, is it is it uniqueness? Is it you like I'm just going to be quiet and let you kind of slice and dice and tell me how it works for you? Man, basically, me just being me. Um, I got the um, I start. I went to IPS. I got to go to select schools. So you know, when that started, I grew up in Broad Ripple. So I got to meet people on the east side going to select school for the magnet that I was in. I also went to Tech and North Central. So I had a lot of popularity around Indianapolis as well. So I was always like the class clown or the funny guy. So people was always looking forward to what I had to do on social media. I just didn't even know the hashtag stuff. Once I learned the hashtag <laughs> stuff, that's when everything started going viral. 
You yeah, know, I, I was just doing a video posting. I saw that you revamped my post, Stephen. I was like, hell yeah, man. He, <laughs> he hashtagged yeah, it up yeah. for us. Yeah, <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> the funniest man that I've said, and I died laughing the first time I saw it, and I don't know how to preface this, but you're in, uh, with all due respect to you, you're in shopping centers, you're in gas stations, you're at corners, you're at intersections. And man, that's some, that's some funny stuff. Cause you're just being real. You know, you know, those neighborhoods, you, you got a good pulse of the city. I think you resonate with people cause you know, people in all pockets of the city, not just one specific pocket of the city. Yeah. That, that, that going back to the schooling, you know, I, I knew people from the East side. Then when I went to North Central, I knew all the people from Carmel and Fishers and stuff and then other areas. So I was always good in those areas. Plus, I'm just being myself. It's not like I'm over there lying. You know, I'm, I'm just telling the truth. I'm not trying to put it down. I'm just letting it know what it was known for. A lot of people don't know that, and then a lot of people do know that. So, you know, it's a yin and a yang, but the yang is pretty much good. My, my son, he hadn't heard of you before, and then he saw the prom, that promo video, and he's like, Dad, I can tell that this guy is just a, a good dude. The reason he said that is because I had guests on a couple weeks ago that was – it was a rough, <laughs> rough interview. And he's like, I think I think this guy would be really nice. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, I can tell he's cool. And plus, Dante, he he talked you up big, too. Do you know who I'm? I know I've thrown that name out a couple times. Do you know who that is? You said Dante, and the only person I really knew was Dante was some person. He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So I was like, uh, okay, okay, well, well maybe I don't know what Dante. Is. So so Dante, he's uh he he does the hoop geeks stuff with the with the kids and the basketball, and I guess um. I, don't, I probably am not supposed to say who the kid is, but like one of the NBA players, um, kids plays on his team, or not kids, nephews plays on his team, and it's like at risk teens and and even younger, some of them. And I, he said something about he had ran into you and um, you were gonna you, you were buying shoes for a team or something like that. Or yeah, okay, I know you. Yeah, about. yeah, okay. He's he's a great dude, man. The ph philanthropy side of it, man. I'm gonna pay you ultimate respect on that, yes. man. Doing that is just uh, that's heartwarming, man. That's that's what it's all about, man. It when you start to talk about philanthropy to me, man, that's bigger than anything we're talking about, if that makes sense. And I just think that's a uh, tip of my cap to you, man. And uh, that's that's some solid stuff there. See, see, the goal, my goal is Indianapolis should be Los Angeles, New York, Indianapolis. To me. It's the Indiana period. It should just be like that to me. I think we have a lot of positive people here that are great at what they do. Um, and we just needed somebody with a platform. I worked hard to get a platform. If you notice, I interview a lot of small businesses as well. Um, I have a charging fee. But sometimes people go ahead and donate for them or I just don't charge them at all. And it'll make a, a huge turnaround for their business. It's several businesses. I won't say their names, but they were on the verge of closing. Just me coming in there made them be able to stay open. And I'm just like, little on me, I'm just fat Dennis. You know, but, you know, that's how I still look at it. But, you know, other people look at me like I'm Michael Jackson sometimes. And, you know, I, I know that feeling, but at the end of the day, I'm just regular Dennis. I hear some people say, oh, my God, Dennis came out to the city. I'm like, I live in the city. <laughs> what do you think of that? But, you know, it, it's just a cool thing because, like, my kids like it. You know, my nieces and nephews like it. And, you know. I think you're... I think you're throwing uppercuts, man. You you know, the humility part of it, the philanthropy part, the humor part. You know, since we've been done this, our journey's been interesting. So I, I was out of broadcasting for 25 years, finally got back into it. And, you know, we've we've interviewed some Hall of Famers. We know the voice of the Indianapolis 500, you know, just being out there, putting yourself out there, meeting people, you know, chiming in, shaking hands and stuff like that. Um, talk to me a little bit about the promo about the Tenderloin, man. That's that's personal to me because I grew up on a farm, man, and, and we had the cows and the and the animals and stuff running around. That was some funny stuff, man. Uh, I think you said a tenderloin the size of your back, if I'm not mistaken. But, but talk to me a little bit about that. I can't do it as good as you, man, but I tried. So go ahead. Man, that's that's at John's famous stew. That's like one of the one of the historical places here in Indianapolis. Um, they still got the bullet holes in the ceiling from John Dillinger, which I think is cool. Oh yeah, um, they give you a tenderloin, and he was like, you know, we have to put it in a pizza box, and I'm, I'm not really paying attention to him. I'm just like, you know, okay, you know, and then they come out with this little bun and this big tender. I'm like, man, you know, what am I supposed to do with that? And it was like, man, people eat it in pieces. Man, that's like one of the biggest sandwiches that I ever had. Um, I honestly, 
I had ate a piece of it. I had seen some people down at the Speedway gas station before I had got there that I had gave like some change to. I just went down there and gave them all, all the food or whatever, man. There you but go. I wasn't going to be able to eat it. And, you know, I didn't want nobody to throw it away. So I just know if I gave it to them, it wouldn't have went to waste. But that mug was huge, man. It, it was really the size of my. It takes away that problem, you know, like when you're uh, you're super hungry and you're coming home with a pizza or something and you're like, I'm just going to go ahead and snag a slice right now, you know, on the way home. See, with that tenderloin, you can just be, you know, eating off the sides until you get home and you can, you know, <laughs> that's perfect. And then perfect. they give you the little bun without a little toppings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like 50% doesn't even have toppings or, you know, any condiments on it or nothing like that, man. So, but shout out to John's Famous too, man. They got some good food, man. For it to be a historical event, a historical building or whatever, you know hey. they use all the same recipes and everything. So I was took inspiration in high school, man. Of uh, I was a class con too, man. Um, hundred people out of a hundred people would say I would have never kind of got out of the area I was in, if you will. But I guess what I would ask you is, is like my biggest thing was if you dipped your chin, like if you're depressed or you're sad, I didn't care what I had to say at any time to anyone to make them have a brighter day or laugh. What's your biggest inspiration for some of the comedy that you have? Hey, th just like what you said, man, you know, um, <clears throat> a lot of people wake up with gray days. You know, I know I wake up with gray days sometimes. And sometimes I just say stuff to myself and it'll make me smile. So I, I know <laughs> I like, I, you know, I can make fun of myself because it doesn't bother me. So, you know, like when it was hot outside the other day, I, I know I heard a lot of people that was kind of down during the day. Oh, I, I had this going, my car was down, they charged me this, you know, so I was like, it's so hot outside, my meat was falling off the bone. And, you know, <laughs> I, I had a lot of people laughing at that and they were just like, this made my day, just looking at your status. So, man, basically, man, you know, we're supposed to wake up happy. Man. We're supposed to go to sleep happy. We're not supposed to wake up mean or, or angry and stuff like that, man. So a lot of my jokes are just for those type of people. Yeah, I used to get in trouble in school a lot, man. My teachers will be <laughs> laughing, but they say I will have to go in the hallway. Yeah, there's so. there's nothing like getting a laugh out of somebody. I mean, it's one of the one of the best feelings ever. What tell us a little bit about your uh your stand up. Dante was there, and that's kind of how he he said he ran into you. He's like, I, I kind of played it cool. I was just like, uh hey, he you worked at the Navy Avionics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah, said yeah, he, needed yeah, he, he, he needed to tap in with you need to tap in with us. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> he did. Was, Real cool. He just when I got finished, he just walked up to me and said, "Hey, here's my card. <laughs> nice to meet you. I've been trying to get with you. Give me a call." And I then walked away. Lost the card. So if y'all can send me his info, that will be yeah for sure. Actually, me and Jay, me and Jason worked there as well. So oh, yeah, because yeah, he yeah. gave me a card and, and I. And it was in my wallet, and I looked in my wallet, and it wasn't there no more. You guys need some uh, cross contacts. I'll just leave it at that. Networking yeah. would be a better term for that. But, yeah, he's a great dude just like yourself, man. Um, talk to me a little bit about, like, um, maybe th what do you enjoy doing the most? Is it comedy? Is it making people laugh? Is it the philanthropy part? Like, what if, if you're ranking them a little bit, how do you kind of see that from your perspective for the audience that's listening to us today? Man, I, I couldn't, I, I honestly couldn't even rank it, man, because every day I get up is either philanthropy, uh, is either comedy, or is either skits, is either something like that, man. Love it. You know, I, I try to do them all at once, you know. It, it's, it was a few people that kind of like, I don't want to say be negative or anything, but kind of like bit my style. So I knew in my mind that I could do a lot of things. So I just went ahead and, you know, quadrupled what I was doing to separate myself from the others. Uh, I just I just like to be separated from, you know, others a lot because I try to do things differently. But, you know, all of them are above, man, are, are great things. I, I enjoy them all daily. What's your favorite favorite uh, platform to uh, it seems like lately you've been on uh, Instagram a lot, like doing the lives. Well, Instagram, I was never on. I was always on Facebook when I went from fourteen hundred followers to over 50K in two months. I started being on Instagram. Instagram yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> exactly, man. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Like Instagram, it. like it. Constantly. I don't even be on TikTok that much no more. I mean, you got to go where the monetization is, right? Yeah, but I actually, I actually make a lot more on Facebook than I do on Instagram. Yeah, because like, um, I can just say, I usually say good morning to you know all guys, beautiful children that speak back. I average maybe five hundred comments on that. 
And um, those really like build my algorithm up. I didn't even know that once I started looking at the insights with my manager and stuff, it, it's like a whole lot more on Facebook. But, you know, I got a lot of followers on Facebook as well. Yeah, whenever I put that out there, because I, I put it on everything that, I, that I'm that i on, and so many people, like, people made more comments and likes on that post than when we, you know, when we um, were promoting, you know, like, some of the old NBA players and things like that that we had on. I mean, you are loved around the city, man. You are loved around here. Is it kind of on a national level now, too? I mean, do you have people that are, aren't from Indy that reach out to you and that you um, you got following you? I know, I know very, very strong in California. Okay, I, I know that. I went to. I've never been on a plane till last year for the first time. Me and my wife went out there, and uh, I had a ball. I got to work because they knew who I was. I'm, I'll be going to Napa Valley next month, so I'm gonna be doing some work there. Baltimore, New York, uh, Phoenix. Phoenix surprised me at the airport. Um, and Florida, a lot of Florida people, uh, and a lot of Kentucky people, but. That's Indianapolis so cool. is, is I can't go nowhere. Like I try to go get some hot dogs at Kroger and it was people just talking about me. Like I didn't hear it. You know, that's that guy from Instagram. That guy. <laughs> like I, yeah, I'm that guy from Instagram. Yeah. Do you mind if that- we take a picture and we taking a picture and then somebody else come past and be like, shit. And <laughs> I turn around and, and they'd be like, if we take a picture, I didn't even get the hot dogs. So now I go in the morning time. That has to be a surreal feeling to rise that quickly. I mean, because it, it really has been, it hasn't been that that long. It was a pretty quick rise. So that has to be surreal to be able to, to walk outside and almost overnight be a, a celebrity. Yeah. And, and and the shit word was an accident. <laughs> I was going to ask how that, how that came about. <laughs> we're filming, we're filming an Indianapolis video and my buddy, I thought he moved the camera too fast, and I said, shit. My dad used to say, shit. So I was just like, shit. And he was like, cut. And I was like, did you? I said, cut that. And he was like, for what? And I was like, because, man, I thought you moved the camera. And I was like, shit. He was like, actually, I think you should keep the word. And I was like, I I don't know, man. He was like, it's catchy. He was just like watching about a week or so. (laughs) We did the video, and then people kept saying, it's the shit for me. It's the shit for me. So, all of a sudden, I looked up, and every time I go somewhere, it's shit, 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 shit. I'm like, man, dang. <laughs> but, you know, hey. Hey, quick confession for you, man. I can't lie to you. Me and Nick here have, have tried to do it, but we just can't emulate what you got. Oh, with God, that yeah, word, I wouldn't man. even close. I, I, I watched it. Yeah, yeah, people yeah, were laughing at yeah, people yeah, like, shit. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I watched it back, and I was like, oh, my God, dude. That could, that could not have been more white boy. You know what I mean? I'm just like – and and I <laughs> – I, I, I'm pretty sure um, there was somebody that had had put a laughing emoji on there, and I'm pretty sure he was he was laughing at me because there wasn't. <laughs> we can't we can't. Like, what's this sure. dude, what's we can't this do it with the excitement and the explanation, man. We just gotta say the word and kind of go with it from there. So that's good stuff. Right? Yeah, it's, it, it's spelled like S H E T T T, so you can like Chevrolet. You can say shit. Oh, okay, yeah, you got to get the get get the long e on there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know that's the copyright and stuff, and the uh, having to get a trademark. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. you get now you, for that. you getting shirts, right? Didn't I hear you say on your live that you're getting or some fans got some shirts made or something with your? Oh yeah, I got um, I got shirts that says I'm from Indianapolis. Shit, I got um, <laughs> the original um, hundred and a hostage Din Din shirts. Um, I got the meme. Somebody made a meme and it was just going around Facebook. Every time somebody did something, they was just like, shit. And it was me. <laughs> and I took the meme and I turned it into a whole shirt as well. So that's cool. And I'm sold out of those at that comedy event. So when's your next comedy? Do you have you have another one coming up that you already booked? Um, well, it's a it's a couple places that asked me just to have my own. Don't be no opening act. Don't be the headliner, just do the whole show. So it's something that I got to look into, man, because it was 115 people here at this last one. And I know um, 85% of the people were there for me. And I didn't ever know who they were or nothing like that. But that's kind of um, that's kind of intimidating at first, yeah. you know, just sitting there talking in front of all these people and they looking dead at you. So I had a heckler as well. 
Um, Did you? I handled that well. Yeah. She I don't she really wasn't a heckler. She was just having a full conversation while I was up there performing and we was maybe like four feet away from each other. <laughs> so I just the night before I had watched a few videos and I seen Martin Lawrence, somebody was talking, and I seen him say, Well, somebody put something in her mouth, my zipper stuff. <laughs> when I said that, I had the whole place laughing. And she still didn't understand what I was talking about. Somebody was just telling her, just be quiet. <laughs> so overall, I think I did pretty good. Man. That's I, I good, seen a lot yeah. of people afterwards. Yeah, you handled that well. I, that, that's one of the, I love stand up. And so anytime I, I'd watch something, it always impresses me when people have that really quick, sharp wit and they can come at, come back with someone impromptu in the crowd, you know, and and uh, or just point someone out. I'm sure that on some of their bits, they have something in their head already about, okay, I got to find a guy that is bald, has a beard, and has, you know what I mean? Like something like that. And and so they, they find somebody ahead of time and point them out. But that's that blows my mind that people have that kind of quick wit, you know? Yeah. I think and I, I kind of like, what'd you say? Go ahead, roll. Oh, no, I, I, I kind of like, as a kid, I, I listened to a lot of like Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, man. So yeah. that's my, my, my attitude was always to like just talk instead of joke, joke, joke. Let's talk about it because everything is funny that I'm around pretty much every day. So I we, think that's my passion. I think that's my lane right there, too, the, the talking stories. We all got talents. My uh, hidden talent is I can say anything to anyone at any time and keep a dead straight face. See, that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that's kind of my thing, but uh, I, yeah, he's pissed I, me off a few times with that before because I thought he was serious, like just straight face. I'm just like, are you are you kidding me right now? Like you know, but yeah, just that I bad. got a brother in law like that, man. <laughs> he he'll, he'll get me real good, and he just look at you and just start laughing. It's kind of deadpan, <laughs> and uh, my mom used to do puns with us. You know what I mean? You you double play a word. You know it means this thing and that thing. I think what I want to talk to you a little bit about, man. I think. I think I really liked, I don't know the cities you mentioned, but I'm just going to mention them, you know, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, things like that. I think Indy's an unheralded city, man. I think uh, people take it for granted. We've had an NBA All-Star game. We've had the Super Bowl. We've got the swimming going on right now. We've got pockets of town that's growing. Um, Talk to us a little bit about maybe, hey, man, uh, Indy's Indy's still growing. Indy's a great city. You know, talk to us a little bit about the pride in the city. It doesn't always have to be sports. Just uh, about living and growing up in Indy, man. I mean, Indy, Indy, Indy's a great, great city. I mean, people people talk about us a lot, but a lot of people do visit here. Mm-hmm. You know, they may not mention it, but they do visit here. I think, I think the the way they're making the neighborhoods look a lot better now. You know, a house that you may have seen twenty years ago for ten thousand is three hundred thousand now. I, I think the way that they're making it look, I think it's awesome. Um, I think we're going in a good direction. I mean, it's crime everywhere, but I, I mean, I, I kind of think the crime is kind of going down as well too, man, because people are starting to, you know, have their own businesses now and, and things are starting to get successful here in Indy. I, I know a few people that started a business just off of a, a sham and they're doing pretty good now. So I love the direction that Indianapolis is going. I think within the next 20 years, we'll be right there. Maybe the next five, maybe the next 10 but within 20, I think we'll be a marquee city. Well, it's it's not just indie. I mean, like there any there's no quote unquote safe place anymore. You know, I mean, like my uh, yeah. my 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 uh, kids are from well, all of us are, I guess are from originally from like the Greenwood area. You know, and you heard about the shooting that happened at at Greenwood Mall. Um, what was it, about a year ago? And I mean, like, I, you know, I, I've dropped them off and let them walk around the mall before, you know, it's just, it's insane. Like there is just no place, no place now that you can a hundred percent know that you're, you know, you're good to go. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah. know that Indy's much different, but I used to always say, I'm like, I, when I was a kid, I couldn't wait to get out of Indy, you know, I like, couldn't wait to move. And then, when, then I had kids and just kind of got rooted here. But Indianapolis is, I mean, it really is a, a cool city. I mean, there's a lot, especially once you're over 21, there's a lot of stuff to do. Hey, it's cliche, man, but we're going to we're gonna give you a chance to give two shout-outs, okay? I'm going to throw you a left-field question. I want you to shout-out one merchandiser, okay? And I want you to shout-out one restaurant. This could be underground. These could be nobody's heard of them. These could be a hot spot. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I want you to throw out two of those because being an entrepreneur myself, 
I think there's value in being heard from the first time and getting new people in uh, with some foot traffic. So hopefully that wasn't too tough of a question, but I'm going to let you take it from there. Shout out to Nap or Nothing. They supply, they flood the city with Indianapolis clothing. They're downtown, celebrities in it, basketball players in it, football players in it. Shout out to Nap or Nothing Clothing, Antonio Maxi. Uh, that's that's for the clothing or the business brand. Uh, restaurants out here. Uh, shout out to South Paul Catering. They have some of the best fish and spaghetti. That's an Indianapolis tradition. They have some of the best fish and spaghetti that you can ever eat. They're uh, low key. Their prices is good, and they make all their food with love. That's, yeah, I got love one it, man. more, man. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, keep hey, it coming. Hey, we'll, we'll, s- it. we'll send them invoices. <laughs> <laughs> the best. The best lemonade on this side of the Midwest. What? Londo's Playmate. Bam, had it. You know, uh, there's a guy named Mike Ford at a fishing show. He brought those, and we got uh, we basically got four to six of them, so I can second that, actually. I can absolutely second that. That's not what you're drinking right now, is it? Yeah. Not, oh, okay. No. <laughs> 32 flavors. You can freeze it. It's never going to water down. I don't know what he does to it, but it's some of the best. That's pineapple grape, and that was a new flavor I tried. And and it's, it's delicious. So it's a local locally made. Yeah, if that don't wake you yeah. up, if, if that don't wake you up and give you a little uh, energy, a little jolt, you 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 ain't doing something right. You, you don't. I mean, the coach the coach buy by the case. Yep. Really. The, uh, yep. The coach buy by the case. If you if you don't want it all sugar, they they do it with the sweet and low everything. Great man. great hydrator on a day like today, man. When you're when you're yeah. out there. So what's yeah. what's yeah. the uh, what's the sport event for you here in town? Um, you know, I, I know you got your gear on there. Is it 500? Is it Pacers? Is it Colts? Got any preference there? Um, well, well, I've always was a, a Colts fan. Um, so it's, it's mainly Colts. Um, and this year, these Pacers, they really impressed me. I Especially at TJ McConnell. So uh, they really impressed me. So shout out to them. Hey, they, they follow me. I didn't even know that. I, I met Obi Toppin. And he was like, "Din Din." I'm like, "You know me?" And he, he's like, "Yeah." And EJ Speed. Somebody was like, "EJ Speed want to know are you coming up here?" And I'm like, "Who is EJ Speed?" And they was like, "Um, he's he's took over like um, uh, the Leonard's position." Yep. He led yep. the coach in tackles last year. Yep. And when we met up with each other, he was like, "Man, I'm a fan. Uh, everybody in the locker room knows you. Um, we're gonna probably get you some tickets." The set behind us, if not on the, you know, next to us on the ground. I was like, cool. That's awesome. I'm going to give you a quick judgment and positive light, man. See, the thing about it is you deserve what you got because you're real. It seems yeah. like to me that we've talked before. I know that sounds odd, but it's natural, right? We're just talking. It we're does, cutting up. I, I, I mean, said that too. So, yep, go ahead. I, no, I said that too. Like, I, I, I know your voice. So where did you go to school at? I went down to Vincennes around 2000, man, so I did a little uh, on-air color commentary. And to be honest with you, man, I had to hold that voice in for 25 years, and I'm not holding it in anymore. You know, I get to talk and, and chat, and and uh, the thing about it is is just, uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought I would get to meet someone that's, a, you know, a cornerstone of any like yourself, you know what I mean, and, and talk back and forth. But it's pretty natural. You, you deserve what you got. I think you follow the trends and, um, you know, tip of my cap to you. I think that's just uh, great to see, especially especially right right here locally. You know, we don't always get a chance to connect with people locally. Sometimes we got to stretch outside the city, but I think our footprint's growing in the city, and uh, we hope to, you know, kind of keep it going in the right direction. Hey, since your yeah, since your success, what are some of like some of the opportunities that you've had that you didn't have in the past? Like some of the coolest things that you've been able to do. Well, I don't know if that you can that you can talk about. (laughs) I don't know if y'all know who Keith Lee is. He came here for All Star Game, and he was like that. Indianapolis were scamming people, were scamming, so people didn't think no one was going to meet him. I was the first person to interview him, so that was like huge All Star Game. I would never imagine sitting on front rows of anything, let alone. um, I guess I'm from Indianapolis. Hashtag. When everybody Googled Indianapolis, I was the first person that came up. So so when they just went ahead and started looking at all the videos, I mean, I was walking up to people like, can I have an autograph? And they was like, shit. The, 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 I'm, I'm like, huh? Like like the, the dude is playing Draymond Green in the Clippers, in the Clippers series. 
on um FX, he was he was buying me all kind of drinks and and food and stuff. And he was just hanging. He was like, man, I, I watched your videos all night long. And you know, Terrell Owens and uh, shout out to David Bell and um, Big Dewan Jones from Cleveland um, Browns. They from Indianapolis. I was just hanging with these people, man. I would never imagine that a year. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about the broadcast about broadcasting is you you do you get to meet people that you would never probably talk to or be able to talk to you know otherwise. So yeah, that's 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 really cool. If if someone wanted to be for because you know everybody, especially teenagers, want to be an influencer, right? So if somebody wanted to be an influencer, what kind of advice would you give them, or would you steer them in a different direction? Then just stay yourself, man. Because I didn't even know I was an influencer. Yeah. Until I, yeah. you know, I got nominated for a few awards. I was telling people, I'm just being Dennis. Then, then yeah. short. So, you know, I would tell them just be their self, man. The sky's the limit. Yeah, it's harder for us guys too, you know, because we can't just throw on a, a small little, a little, tiny little shirt and dance around, you know. Like we gotta, we gotta actually have some substance there. So. <laughs> I'm gonna judge. I'm gonna judge a little bit, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You call a spade a spade, okay? So I think you wake up with a lot of energy. I think uh, I think you almost pull back on your energy so people don't see bouncing around and and and, and being crazy. Like I, I'm a uh, I'm not a light guy myself. Uh, I liken it to you know I could go on a 20 mile bike ride, not literally, and then right after that do an hour over here, and then take a two hour break, and then do another hour segment over here. Where do you where do you kind of capture that energy? And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's kind of how I judge you. You know, your high energy, your your high excitement. Uh, you just you're just passionate about what you do. Am I am I am I heading in the right direction with that question, or is that wrong? Yeah, you you you're right. Um, now that I do uh, influencer stuff, I don't have to go out nine to five, and or I don't have to go out and you know do stuff every day. I can do stuff two times a week and stayed at home. So at home, I'm silly all the time. I have twins. My daughter is, one of my twins is a girl. Her name is Genesis. We call her Jen Jen. She's just like me. So, you know, she wakes up, she's full of energy. She goes to sleep, full of energy. She's going to be funny like that. So my son's funny. You know, we're all funny in some type of way, but I can just be myself at home. And hey, when I wake up, I want to be silly. When I go to sleep, I want to be silly. It's just enjoying life man you know we don't have a lot of time here so i just enjoy it what did you do before this um i worked at this place called it was so long ago <laughs> forgive me omnisource that was my last job job omnisource, omnisource. i that- drove a big machine um for the steel company and i got like a lot of stuff it was the one on hope road then I decided to go into business myself and started doing photography. Really wasn't the best photographer in the world. I just had a popular name. So people were getting pictures and I wasn't stopping them yeah. because it was paying. And people was just wanting pictures because Dennis was taking them. And then I just started the food thing. And then when I seen people was asking me, how much would it cost for you to come here and review our place? Ding, 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 ding. Mm-hmm. Took off and then here we are now. Have you been always been a foodie? Is that your thing? No. No? Okay. No. I just went and said this. Everybody said this hamburger was good and it's not the best hamburger in the world. And, <laughs> and people was like, oh, I agree with him. Or <laughs> Long's Bakery is not the best donuts in the world. And, and or oh, I agree with him. I wasn't talking about Long's. I was trying to say they are the best when they're fresh. But maybe two or three days later, they're not. Yeah. And people were like, oh, you can Long's are good for a whole week. I was like, no. Yeah, my first experience at Long's, I, I'd never been, this was probably like 10 years ago, but I'd never been there. And so I get there, I wait in this line, like, you know, wrapped around the building, get up there to the register, go to pay, pull out my card. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, it's cash only. I'm like, what? Yeah, ca- cash only. This uh, this pregnant lady behind me was like, I got you. And she like, she paid for it. So I made sure to pay it forward next time I went there. But yeah, I was like, that's that was my first experience because I had no idea that, you know, I'm like, who doesn't who doesn't take cards? <laughs> don't don't feel bad. My first time in there too, I did it too. Did it I too. never knew that. <laughs> yeah. So but the last time I was there I got to go in the back and get my donuts fresh off the press. There you go. There you go. So, uh, that you're moving up, course. right? You're moving you're ranking yeah. up. You're throwing your rank card. My my underground yeah. place is the Kalachi factory. Oh yeah, that place that, is that good. place is good. Where, if you've never been there. Where is that at? 
Uh, Nick might know better than I, me. I think it's in I think it's in Castleton. I think or McCordsville. Maybe it's up north. But it's like those um, those rolls, and they're similar to like rolls you get at say like Texas Roadhouse or something like that. But they're stuffed with things. So like what, you can get like a breakfast one. It's stuffed with like eggs and biscuits and, and gravy. Yeah, I mean, it's biscuits like, and gravy. Yes. Yeah. And it's one of those places that, like, they cook a certain amount, and then if you go in there at 9.30 a.m. and you just late, hey, you out of luck. You're just going to have to get the bacon and eggs. You can't get the biscuits. I've seen them on the whatever. news. So, yeah, go in there sometime I've if you get a chance, man. They'd be a good place to uh, kind of talk a little bit about or whatnot. Um, what upcoming project do you have, maybe, or what, uh, what What do you hope the future looks like in the next six months, if you could, if you could pinpoint it? And I know that's a broad question, but just kind of curious. Well, Lord willing – I'm I'm going to be doing some um I'm going to be doing some skits with some uh some real popular people in Chicago and Atlanta. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some skits. I also direct this little series on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok called Four Six Two O Five. It's basically um a soap opera for social media, and we just show real life on what happens in Indianapolis or just cool. like what happens in the world. Okay. Um, uh, I did 56 episodes. Um, they were averaging 15 to 20 uh, 20,000 views each episode. So we was gonna turn it into a movie, but I'm gonna do a season two, and then I'm gonna turn it into a movie because I'm teaching myself videography more better. Um, and man, just we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of singers. Uh, 20. Uh, we're gonna get the new singers that's going back to school this year. We're trying to get each school. We're gonna get two singers out of each school a pair of tennis shoes. That's awesome. Um, not no LA gears or nothing like that. Yeah. Air Max or Jordans or whatever shoe of their choice. Um just letting them know that is 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 you can be positive without being negative and you can do things from the positive standpoint without getting it the negative way. Um and that's about it, man. Just trying to grow and grow. And if I find something else that I think I'm good at, I I'll throw that into the bucket as well. Yeah, I'd really like to earn this, but you know what I mean? If we could ever, um, you know, help you with an initiative, yeah, get some stuff out. I don't want to volunteer Nick, man, but he's a great videographer. I'm sure you got your network or whatever. Oh, man, yeah. I, 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 I could throw down on some comedy, man. I can't I can't stand in front of 100 people comedy, but I can make people crack up and say stuff off the cuff and uh, kind of do that. So any little event that you could invite us to, to add value to your cause – Man, we're there as volunteers because uh, giving back to the community is something special. And I got to be honest with you, man. I'm not from Indy. I live in the in the, in the burbs, is what I'm going to call them, about 15 to 20 minutes out. But uh, I, I love the city, man. If I could have grown up, you know, I rode my bike six or seven miles just to find a basketball court and maybe have one or two people, not just drive to a spot and there's 30 or 40 people hooping. You know what I mean? So, really love the city. Really love to see that. Um, and it's just great to see, you know, a person that's uh, rising up the rising up the ranks and 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 doing the right thing, man. That's great. Yeah, I think you're going to do I, some I, awesome things, man. I kind of figured he was a videographer. The way he, he did that video was nice. I said he had some <laughs> skills. You can tell it wasn't no by it just learned. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's like you, I mean, like I just, I just geek out on stuff like that. So like I'll, you know, YouTube university, you know what I mean? Like I'll get on there and, and learn as much as I can about whatever I'm interested in that week, <laughs> you know? So, so this has been my thing for a little while now. And that's kind of why we started the podcast. I'm like, Jason, I really want to, you know, I'm kind of a ham anyway. I'm like, I really want to get out in front of people, you know, and I really want to um, do the whole AV thing. And so, you know, something that I haven't told anybody yet, we haven't. We have y'all my first podcast. Oh, one, we got bre oh, breaking, news. breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> I have about 15 or 20 people in my inbox about it. And actually, y'all was the first one ever. So awesome. That's that's one. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a thing called Sharif. Hmm. Uh, it's a big music festival here. Sharif? Yes. Uh uh. It's a big music festival here. Um, they also have a thing called Butter, where they people have art and stuff. Famous people come. Yeah, so I have Charisse, heard of that. Charisse is in August. Um, I'm hosting the main stage. Awesome. Okay. So that, that they have all artists from Indianapolis and Midwest area on the other stages, and I have the main stage, which will be like the Franchise Boys and Currency from the 2000s. Cool. So, yeah. Well, we'll yeah we'll promote the heck out of that for you for sure. Yeah, that's, that's something that I'll be doing. They're going to donate to the kids as well for the shoes, for uh, 
the summertime. Um, that that's about it, man. Nominated for a Leak Award. That was something that I always wanted. I always wanted my picture in Country Kitchen and at the Leak Awards, and my okay. pictures up there with the celebrities at Country Kitchen. And I was in there when Shaq came in there that day during All Star Game. Yeah, and that did did it. It burnt down, didn't it? And then they had to rebuild it. They rebuilt it, and they put all the celebrities that was coming in there to eat. They have a a, a three thousand square foot ballroom in the back, and they had them all in there. And I was waiting for a table, and the lady came up there and said, "He doesn't wait for a table. He comes to the back." I was like me, she wow. Said, yeah. yeah. I came to the <laughs> back, and only person that knew me was uh, AC from the news. Other people in there was uh, like Shannon Sharp, and I don't want to go up to him and be like, "Oh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan." Uh, Mike Epps seen me. Mike Epps was like, "We're gonna do something together." Uh, it was just, it was just that's amazing. that's wild, yeah. Yeah, you just got to play it like Dante, right? It's like, hey, yeah, yeah play here's, cool, here's man. my car, man. Peace <laughs> out. Yeah, Dante was too cool, man. And he did like this, he tapped my shoulder and said, Be safe. He left. <laughs> he's a good he, stoic, man. He's a great, he's dude. an amazing guy. He's he really a is. great dude, man. He helps, he helps so many guys. Um, be in the gym is what I'm gonna say, be in the gym, making us, uh, a name for themselves on the, on the hardwood. And I mean, it's just, uh, it's great to see. He has a lot of the qualities that you have, man, which is you got a good heart. You want to see the best of your city. You want to flex yeah. your muscle a little bit and let us know that, Hey man, there's plenty of people out here that are winners that want to be seen and want to be heard from in a, in a positive light. You know what I'm saying? And uh, getting in front yeah. of those people, the names that you mentioned, man, is like, you know, uh, an encyclopedia Britannica, if you will, you know, of, of the you know the famous sports stars out there, so when people come to town, it's great to see that you're part of that and uh, get to do your thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm at. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that your all your stuff's plastered everywhere. So, is there anything else that you wanna you wanna plug or anything coming up that you want people to know about? Nah, I mean, I mean, feel free, man. <laughs> those main things that I just said, okay. and um. Just pay attention to my page. I mean, stuff comes in every day pretty much. Like I said, I have to have a manager now because it was overwhelming for me. So I have to have someone to, you know, represent me now. So Yeah, see, we just we just went over your manager's head. I'm just like, hey, I'm, I'm just coming straight to him. <laughs> uh, and I told her, I told her she seen it. She was like, when did this come about? And I was like, oh, this was before I hired you. So, <laughs> there you go. You know, there you go. Yeah, dude. It was it was literally literally I had a uh I had a whole team of friends. And sometimes you can't mix friends with business because if you mix friends with business, you might not be friends forever. So I had to I had to, you know, in a nice way eliminate friends and then get people that don't know me but that were qualified for the spot because you know, friends, man, they'd be lazy. They won't do this. They won't do this because they know you're not going to say too much or, you know, they're going to, you know, you're going to be lenient. But I just didn't want that for me, man, because I'm actually trying to be famous. Yeah. Have you so. have you seen that series with um, The Rock? I think it's is it called Ballers. You seen? Yeah, I used to love that show. Yeah, dude, that show's awesome. So. So, yeah, that, that's what that reminds me of, because, you know, like that that's how it was on that on there, you know, and I it got me thinking. I'm like, I bet it's really I bet it's really like that. You know what I mean? I bet I bet they really like they all probably get taken advantage of and a lot you know, of them, that one football player in there they had his buddy with him the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, that's the yeah, guy I was thinking I of. Like yeah. His buddy needs to get a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just draining him. Just draining him dry. <laughs> yeah, it was just a you know, no hard feelings. We're all still cool, we're all still friends. I just wanted to let them know before I, I got any more successful. Let's just go ahead and nip this in a bud now. Yeah. Makes sense, man. Well, hey, again, thanks so much for coming on. I hope we can uh, hook up again sometime. Like, I don't know, like maybe not even in studio. Maybe we can like come to one of your events or something. And Oh, most, def uh, most definitely. Most definitely. I like y'all too, man. Yeah, yeah. we're the I volunteers, like man. Seriously, we'll we'll cut, you know, whatever, whatever you need within reason, man. Just get us in front of some people and in return, we'll get you in front of some people, man. You know how it works. You may put us as yeah, pl plans out. I'm going to have to need some of your – Videography skills, I know. All right, hey, you got it, man. There you go. You got man. it. Yeah, so you can do, on your next uh, stand up, you can put me and Jason out in the crowd as plants. Hey, hey, you I'm know what I mean? Like when I when I have to have three or four people to open up, I'm going to call you. 
Oh, no, I don't mean to do so. <laughs> No, but what you got to remember, man, if you plan this out in the audience, man, I'm going to pull out the, you know, uh, hey, is that your drink over there? Is that your grape haterade? <laughs> you got to watch that. You know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? So, and I'm, I'm a, y'all podcast, I'm going to let people know about y'all podcast as well. Um, we appreciate it. Yeah. This is something that I, I always thought about doing. So, you know, it let me see how you guys are just laid back and cool with it. You know, this it, that makes me feel like, you know, maybe one day I could do that. Oh, know? absolutely, yeah. People have to be in their suits and stuff, and you know, but nah. Now I we started it out like when we first started it. We did um we did it at the kitchen table, and then we went to the couch, and now um kind of have like this little makeshift studio in here. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's cool. I, I look forward to it every week. Hey, so uh, you can handle this last one, man. So keep people laughing is what I'm going to send you off with, man. But. We just gotta, we just gotta hear it live, man. We gotta hear your uh, your Cadillac pronunciation of the word starts with an S and ends with a T. So just give us a proper three one seven Indianapolis din din send off. What it do, Nap Town? It's your boy Big Din Din, chilling like a villain on this beautiful day. Shit! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> right on, man. Hey, thanks so much, dude. I really appreciate it. All right, appreciate y'all. Good work, man. Have a good rest of your day, man. You kicked it. Me too, man. Appreciate you. All right, man. Indianapolis, where us Hoosiers eat tenderloins the size of your back. Shit! From Indianapolis, where if you ride down 16th Street, you know that motherfucker used to scare you. Shit! I'm from Indianapolis, man, and we don't love these hoes. Shit! I'm from Indianapolis, man. And these ain't the real high fries. These motherfuckers are right here. Shit. I'm from Indianapolis. And if a half kids have a register, you don't want them to tell mice. Shit. I'm from Indianapolis. And if you ain't never had Christmas fried chicken out west, you tripping. Shit.